good afternoon audience we all know that we are passing through a very difficult phase but then it shall all pass they say fortune favors the prepared mind so here we are addressing you digitally to give insight into challenges and solutions to overcome in sems installations i ranjit roy welcome you all in this environmental leadership forum elf webinar series of stack emission monitoring solutions and compliance elf is the platform to connect and understand the challenges faced by all of us with us today we have mr garhad who is segment leader in process and environment in horiba europe he has a vast experience in gas analysis and he is involved in various configuration procedure as well as well as for the certification procedure i would request all of you that you can put up your queries at the end of the session we also have a provision where you can ask your question during the presentation through the chat box which is appearing in your screen i would like to welcome mr garad and handing over the platform to him over to garad thank you a very well welcome and good afternoon from my side i am proud to welcome you to today's webinar as well as uh, mr ranjit already uh, told you uh, in a few minutes ago i'm coming in from europe from austria today and will accompany you through the webinar stack emission monitoring solutions for the next hour. As Ranjit San already mentioned, my name is Gerhard Rosbeintner and I am the segment manager for process and environmental business from Huriba, responsible for Europe, Middle East and Africa. As first step, I want to share a few slides about Huriba and our presence globally, but also in India. Horiba Limited, Horiba Limited was founded in 1953 by Dr. Horiba, who founded as a and is now a joint company, a joint stock company, which is traded on the most important stock places in Japan. With Atsushi, Atsushi Horiba as chairman and Yuichi Saito as executive vice chairman and group CEO. Uh, our internally experienced personalities are involved in the management of the company. Our company is divided into five segments, which can be named as automotive test systems, environmental test, uh, environmental and process instruments systems, medical diagnostics and instrument systems, semiconductor instrument and systems, and scientific instruments and systems. Overall, Horiba can be described as a company that deals exclusively with the production of analysis devices. Due to the continuous expansion of the business areas, new businesses areas are now being developed, like engineering support, consulting, and testing, especially in the field of the automotive industry. In the process and environmental business, we are dealing with the ambient air monitors, uh, the, the gas analysis systems, water quality monitors, thermometers, and other instruments which are necessary for the environmental business. The other three segments, like medical, semiconductor, and scientific, deals with special instruments related in their uh, business, but we are not focusing on this instrument on this business today. Horiba India is the country where we have the highest number of local offices just after Japan. With nine locations all over the country, it is very well covered with local presence of Horiba direct staff. The head office is located in Delhi. And the other offices and production sites, for example, in Haridwar, the medical reagent factory, and in Bune, in the technical, where the technical center is located. 
Here you can see the new building we have opened in uh, Chakan. The office is uh, north uh, of the city of Pune, as you may know. To cover the local requests and reduce delivery times from suppliers, all over the world, Horiba has several engineers with expertise, know-how, and manufacturing. Also, this is uh, valid for India. This allows to manufacture prototypes as well as customized goods in the framework of the serial production. To increase the footstep all over India and consider the increasing needs of our Indian customers, Horiba is relocating the Nagpur facility to a new location where the building will be extended. A new rear jet factory with higher volume for medical analysis, chemicals and international training center will be installed in this building as well. Finally, there's also the new factory for all the process and environmental products located, which will be sold to the Indian market. Coming to the details of the segment, what we are talking today. The process and environmental segment is covering several industries and fields of application. Beside the process gas and process water monitoring, in safe as well as hazardous areas, the analysis of gases in our environment like stack gas emissions, ambient air monitoring and radiation is our target. As the, as the requires a different measuring, uh, as this requires different measuring methods and measuring ranges, different instruments are used for this application to have the right instrument for the right customer and his needs. Now I'm coming to the main topic of today's webinar, the solutions for the stack emission monitoring and request of compliance to international and local regulations. To make sure what we are talking about, there are several pollutants in the air. Some are coming from nature, like wildfires or volcano eruption, but the biggest part of all pollutants we are monitoring are human-made. With the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, when the world population began to use the available resources of the Earth for themselves, the release of harmful substances into the air and into the water also increased. All of us using trucks for transportation of goods and cars, as well as airplanes for our moving from one location to the other. And for sure, we will use the medium which is doing this in a comfortable way for all of us. When the actual COVID-19 situation did not happen, I'm not sure if I would not stand in front of you personally and talk to you in a conference hall. And yes, the trip from Europe to India, I would have done by airplane. So we are used to take the resources from the earth and use them for our daily life. But we need to think about this uh, to have an effect, that this will have an effect of to the pollutants and substances the humans will emit to our planet Earth. Let us now come to some background information about the European and US regulations, which are expected to be implemented in a certain way in India as well. What are the European guidelines and directives so far? We started in 1996 with the so-called IPPC directive, which was the best available technology based. That means we have the best available technology requested from the regulation to be used from the customers, uh, which means the industry and the, the plants. In 2001, there was adding a new directive for large combustion plants large power plants or large industries. And in 2000, there was additional directive for waste incinerators. In the years after that, we worked uh, on the this is EC guidelines, uh, but uh, the background is that there were, is for sure coming up new uh, information, which is was requested new guidelines. 
The new EC guideline is now starting from 2010, the Directive on Industrial Emissions, which cover all the directives uh, I have spoken before. And in 2015, it was realized that medium combustion plants, that means smaller size plants, are not covered. So this is why also the medium combustion plant directive was added to the industrial emission directive. In the US, we have EPA guidelines. This, this is the Code of Federal Regulations. This is 40 CFR Part 60, 40 CFR 63, and 40 CFR 75. All three regulation, uh, three regulations uh, can be, but not directly compared with the European regulation. All of them is kind of standard of performance. Then you have emission standards for hazardous air pollutants and AC train trading program. What they don't have is, uh, the difference is that the, between the EU and the US EPA guidelines, that the US EPA do not have, do have only EPA compliant instruments or systems. The EU directives and standards are requesting certified systems. In this certification requests, I will go in more detail in the next slides. In detail, we are talking about the EN14181 guideline. You may have heard about the QL1, 2, and 3 procedure. The QL1 procedure is to approve the AMS. AMS is the acronym for Automatic Monitoring Systems. The QL1 is the, to check the suitability of this AMS. According to standard ISO 14956, it specifies the evaluation of the applicability of the method based on laboratory performance and conformity field test. And requirements on dynamic behavior of this AMS and related to the EN15627 specifies the requirements and test procedures. This need to be performed by accredited test laboratory. The full scope of work is the type approval of the full system, the performance evaluations, and to calculate the uncertainty of the full system. Next step is the QL2. Same standard, EN14181. But the difference is we are no more talking about a system which is in laboratory. We are now talking about the setup and calibration and validation in the field at customer site. That means after installation, the functionality of the AMS will be tested with the certain uh, topics mentioned here in the slide. Next step is the QL3, which checks and uh, validate the drift and the precision of the instrument installed. The major difference to the uh, two guidelines before is that the QL3 procedure need to be done by the process operator. That means the plant owner is responsible for taking care of this QLC procedure. And finally, we also have the definition of the ASD, the so-called annual surveillance test. The annual surveillance test is, uh, is necessary that after a certain period of one year, the instrument need to be checked and uh, the functional tests need to be performed. We need to confirm the calibration function by a five comparison measurement with a standard reference method inst instrument. And finally, the variability and validity of the calibration function need to be calculated and uh, also sent to the data acquisition system. As a summary, uh, I have added this slide right here. And uh, we start with the suitability test, which need to be done from the manufacturer and the testing laboratory. This is the QL1. After the installation, the installation need to be verified with the QL2 step, this again need to be done by a measuring laboratory, which is certified to a ISO standard. After, uh, on, a, on a frequently level, we have the QAL3 procedure where the operator and the plant owner is responsible for. And 
not to forget the annual surveillance test, the validation of calibration with the accredited measuring uh, from a me accredited measuring laboratory again. Let us compare the actual situation in India right now. The Indian regulation is now uh, covering industries such as power, cement, iron and steel plants, chloralkali, pharmaceutical and so on, as well as other categories of industries release, re releasing large quantum of pollutants through air emissions and effluent discharge. In order to regulate such emissions and discharge to safe limits, the SPC, SPCBs and the PCCs have prescribed standards for various pollutants emitted and discharged to the industries as notified under the Environment Protection. Compliance monitoring needs strengthening to ensure that industries and facilities comply with emission standards. With rapid industrialization, it is becoming a need and necessity to regulate compliance by industries with minimal local inspection of industrial sites. In August 2018, the CPCB published revised guidelines for continuous emission monitoring systems. This includes the submission of emission data on every day all along the year to the servers of the CPCB and the SPCB. Furthermore, the authorities will have the possibility of doing remote calibration of the systems to ensure a correct analysis of the monitoring device. To achieve the same level of instrument testing and certification in India, as it is already in Europe or the US, the next steps are already planned and published. The verification, validation and accuracy check of the values indicated by the online devices needs to be done. I'm in the business already for about 20 years right now, and I learned that this is not an easy task to do so. I expect that the realization of this may take some more years. Although, when the political willingness in India is available, it might become real faster than it was in other countries. The next topic I want to touch is about the different methods of continuous emission monitoring system. There are challenges and solutions which REBA can provide to bring the best analysis results. The word best in this case mean of course the highest accuracy and correct results. This is not most of the time the lowest results from the analysis. First part here are the different methods to bring the gases for the stack or gas duct to the analyzer model. What are the typical SAMS components? You can see here uh, the stack where the gas is coming from the industry, from the pollutant, and uh, bring the gas to the ambient air. A sampling probe mounted at the appropriate high on the stack. Next one is the sample line, which need to bring the, uh, to need to transport the gas from the stack to the instrument. At the instrument or in the, in the cabinet, a programmable logic controller, short PLC, or also human machine interface, HMI, is installed to manage the, the monitoring process and also to connect uh, the people to the system. Finally, it is necessary a suitable data, data acquisition system to collect and generate the data reports and the records for the CPCPs and PCCs. A shelter building erected and maintained to provide the proper operating environment for the analysis equipment. This is sometimes required for the customers, but also relevant uh, when we are talking where the shelter, where the cabinet, uh, where the installation is located. And when we are talking about rainy monsoon season and so on, you might understand it's not an easy and not nice workload to maintain the system outside to stand in the rain and uh, maybe also to have some other climate conditions as each electrical instrument wants to work in. The commonly used uh, SAMS technologies. I'm now touching four different technologies. 
First one is the extractive SAMS with a heating sample line. Where you have uh, seen just now the, the picture, uh, we are talking about the different types. Next one is the same extractive SAMS, but with permeation dryer in the sampling probe. And then I will come to in situ SAMS and dilution SAMS. Let's start with the extractive SAMS. When you remember back, we have a sample gas need to be extracted from the stack and to bring uh, to uh, use a heated sample line to transport the gas to the cabinet for the analyzer. Typical distance is between 5 to 30 meters, but sometimes it might be up to 100 meters, depending on the stack size and also depending on the location of the instrument in the cabinet. Extractive technology is mostly used for monitoring of SO2, NOx, CO, CO2, O2, but also total hydrocarbons and mercury. It's not commonly used for continuous monitoring of ammonia, hydrogen chloride, and hydrogen fluoride. This is only possible when a FDR or Janssen sensitive technology is used. The next one is already talking about the permeation dryer in the sampling. When we have now uh, directly in the sampling probe uh, a permeation dryer, we can avoid to have uh, the heated line. I mentioned before it might be up to 100 meter heated uh, sample line and this of course takes a lot of energy. So what we are doing is that we put the dryer which is normally installed in the cabinet. We do this already in the sampling probe and we don't need to have a heated sample line bringing the gas from the probe to the analyzer cabinet. This is technology can be effective used for the same components as before, but only up to a moisture content of up to 20 volumes percent humidity. If this uh, humidity level is higher, then the a permeation dryer is above his limits and uh, it might have that the moisture in the gas behind the dryer is still available and will bring wrong information or wrong uh, analysis results. Also, it cannot be used for hydrocarbons uh, monitoring with the TOC because for a TOC analyzer, the analyzer needs to get the sample and the gas at the temperature of 180 degrees. Otherwise, we have a loss of several uh, hydrocarbons which are e exceeding uh, or below this uh, dew point. Also, ammonia monitoring is not possible because of the loss of the ammonia and uh, the ammonia will react to ammonia hydroxide, also known as ammonia water or ammonia solution. Some, some comparison, the extractive SAMS technology with the heating sample line. We have some advantages. First of all, it complies with US EPA and European regulation for SAMS. Uh, then it's also easy to access the analyzer for maintenance and service because it's located at the base floor, somewhere at the ground. You can easily uh, go there. And the quality control procedure is also done quite easily. Of course, no advantage without, without disadvantage. Uh, Talking already about this heated sampling line, this heated sample line need to be laid. And if you uh, think about uh, delaying a heated sample line for 50 or even more meters, then it's quite complicating in case of such long distances. What I mentioned already is the high power consumption is uh, in case of long distances between the sampling point and the analyzer cabinet. The next advantage is that we have the results already of measurement based on dry gas conditions. And we don't need to correct them later on again. The disadvantage is also mentioned before, it is not commonly suitable for measurement of ammonia, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, without uh, having FDR or young sensitive technologies. Coming to the, uh, the advantages, disadvantage for the extractive SAMS with permeation dryer, it also complies with the US EPA and European regulations. And the further advantage I mentioned already, there is no need of the heated sample line and you save a lot of electrical energy 
about 100 watt per meter of the sampling line. The big disadvantage is you need at the sampling probe, you need dry supply air, which is normally instrumental air, oil and water free. You need to bring it there. And also the consumption of this dry supply air is sometimes quite high. The biggest disadvantage in our case is the maximum temperature of the membranes uh, will stand up to 120 degrees C. So if there is a high temperature of the gas in the stack, we need to find another solution because the membranes will melt and your probe and your cooler is damaged. Next topics uh, I have is about the gas concentrations uh, measured with in situ SEMS. Gas concentration are measured as performed as cross stack systems where you have the sender and receiver on one side and reflect the unit in the other one. You have a gap measuring probe, which is just entering on one side or a gas di diffusion probe where you also have sender and receiver unit only on one side. The methods to have this in situ SEMS is Tunable Diode Laser Absorption Spectroscopy, DDLS, or DOAS, Differential Optical Absorption Spectroscopy, or finally also Infrared Absorption Spectroscopy. Following gases can be measured with the um, in situ SAMS. It's uh, basically able to detect nitrogen oxides, ammonia, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, methane, met methane ethyl, carbon monoxide, dimethyl sulfide, and finally oxygen. Depending to other gases available in the gas mixture, it is also possible to detect other gases, but these need to be checked for each application separately. In situ SAMs, of course, have advantages. Some of them, mostly DDA, DDLAS systems are approved for laboratory SAMs as well. We don't need to have a heated SAMs, uh, sampling line. And for these special components I mentioned before, there is almost no interference in case of the DDLAS instruments. Uh, unfortunately, not all of them comply with the US EPA and European regulations. Mainly, the reason is the complicated quality control as you frequently have to check the instrument. And if you have a pass through, you cannot check the instrument without having no gas or no <clears throat> system full uh, available for calibration. Last one is the dilution SAMS, where uh, we have the dilution technique uh, similar to the conventional extractive system, except that the sample is quantitatively diluted already at this uh, probe location. With clean dry air, which is a zero air, similar to the uh, permeation air, the relative moisture content will be, uh, will be reduced in that way that the sample is maintained above the dew point. So we can take, similar to the um, permeation dryer, we can take the unheated line from the probe to the uh, cabinet with the analyzer installed. What we have here is a picture. You see the stack where the heated sample line, and then you bring all the, the analyzers with a non-heated tube for the monitoring of, for example, SO2, NOx, CO, CO2. What we can't do is to have uh, a dilution for oxygen. We can, the Diluted air cannot measure the oxygen level in the gas because it's diluted with more or less ambient air. So the measuring of ambient air uh, is much higher uh, than the real value of oxygen in the gas. That means finally, we need to bring the ambient, uh, the gas in a also heated air to an oxygen analyzer. As a, another disadvantage on this case is that uh, we have the air, the, the, the sample gas already diluted and we don't know the humidity level anymore. So we have with the zirconia oxygen probe, for example, we can analyze the wet oxygen monitor and then we calculate 
the difference between the wet oxygen and the dry oxygen we can calculate on the humidity level of the uh, sample gas that we finally correct all the measured values on a dry gas base. The dilution ratio, which has to be decided according to the concentration of the appropriate measuring gases, uh, is typically between 50 to 1 up to 300 to 1, depending on the concentrations. At this, this is what I mentioned already. This technology is measured on wet gas base, and we need to measure oxygen on wet gas and dry gas to calculate uh, the final humidity level and calculate the, uh, uh, to be able to calculate on dry gas base. Advantages is, is the same again as uh, mentioned already uh, before. It's a simple sampling system. Ambient air analyzers can be used and it also complies with the US EPA regulations for SAMS, but it does not comply with the actual European regulations for SAMS. This might change in the future, but so far the dilution is a kind of risk for our authorities and they don't accept this now. So what are the challenges? The most important part of the analysis uh, is the correct engineered sample handling system. The analyzer model can be the best in the world with highest accuracy and fastest analysis speed and high reliability. When the gas is modified in a certain way from the sample handling system, the analyzer model can only detect the molecules in the gas which are present in the sample gas. This ends up in the situation that the challenges of the system engineered are starting at the stack itself and all of the gas parameters in the gas need to be analyzed. Sample probe, the first topic from the, the stack. The sample probe filters freq uh, filter frequently get chocked. There might be several reasons for. One is an improper selection of the filter micron size by the engineering company. Unfortunately, this happens for good engineering companies due to insufficient information of gas sample parameters from customer side. Another reason might be the selecting of the wrong material of the filter. The reason why is coming again from unknown sample conditions to the planning engineers. Next topic is the blowback system at the sampling point. The blowback bandel or the scavenging bandel should be a heated one to avoid any condensation or chalking of sample line. It is found in some installations already that customer side have sometimes the instrument line and uh, sample line bypassed and or directly connected to the sample probe, which should be completely avoided. You will see some pictures later uh, where you, uh, a wrong or a bad uh, engineering and location you will see. The sample line should be heated with proper tracing to maintain the dew point of the sample line and to keep true representative samples to the analyzer. Also, it is to ensure that there is no leakage in the complete line from the probe to the analyzer model. So the next one is uh, the sample handling system located in the analysis cabinet which might be located into an air-conditioned shelter or outside, depending on the customer's request. Talking about cooler pumps, analyzer sample conditioning system, the final one, and uh, talking about some drift, which also need to be uh, considered for the analyzer. The cooler is mostly of a uh, thermoelectric type. This causes problems in due course of time with leakage of refrigerant gases. Next topic, the pumps, is used to have continuous uh, 365 days in a year. The pump selection should be very much accurate and should be designed to give designated flow rate to the analyzer only. The analyzer sample handling system should be designed in such a way that there is negligible change in the representation of the sampling. This is what I mentioned before, is the analyzer can be the best in the world if the sample handling system changes <coughs> sorry 
uh, changes the gas uh, concentrations, the analyzer can't analyze in a good way. Again, challenges, as you mentioned before, you see here on the left, the installation is not well done. There is a poor construction of the full system. Then the next one, there might be a good engineering and a good uh, construction of the basic system, but later on it was necessary to modify it and this modification was not done properly on a blowback panel. And finally, the third picture on the right hand, you see that the, there is a non-heated probe. It is directly connected to the sample gas and this might clock the, the sample line and you can't bring any uh, gas to the analyzer. So what is the horrible solution in the stack gas analysis? We have well-engineered solutions. You will have a questionnaire sheet where, where you need to fill all the relevant information at the first level uh, that our engineers can be on the safe side to plan the sampling system and to engineer the full system in the perfect way that the instrument and the full system will stand for more than 10 or even 20 years. We have a heated, well-designed probe. We have a blowback panel and so on. So everything is well-designed from the beginning. The ender series instruments can measure up to five components in one. We have a miscatcher in the sample line to remove the SO3 because nobody wants to have uh, sulfuric acid in their analyzer. It will damage everything. And you know SO3 plus H2O will result in sulfuric acids, which need to be avoided. All the measurement technologies uh, we have for zero calibration, we are using uh, nitrogen or ambient air. We have oxygen span, uh, span calibration also with ambient air, or with the oxygen gas cylinder, will described in the next slides. So where is the differences between Horiba and the standard uh, principles. We have the so-called cross-flow modulation. Uh, with an NDR monitoring, we are using for NOx, SO2, CO, and CO2. We have not necessary optical adjustment. When you look at the standard uh, NDIR monitoring, it is possible that you need to adjust the optic uh, once a year. With this cross-flow method, it's also a very stable uh, stability in long time. So what we are talking about, uh, the cross-flow modulation type uh, detects the gap of the infrared absorption caused by alternatively introducing the sample gas and the reference gas in the period of 500 milliseconds to the same measurement cell. As a detector, the capacitor microphone detector is used. This method enabled the time a stable, accurate indication, free of zero drift, as mentioned already. It also realizes an easy maintenance, which avoids an optical adjustment, as it does not use any rotating chopper, as, chopper, as gen other general infrared detectors are. So, what is the basic uh, uh, method we are using for oxygen? If oxygen, which is paramagnetic gas in an uneven magnetic field, its molecules are attracted to the stronger portion of the magnetic field, increasing the pressure in that portion. The pressure increases at this time is taken out from the magnetic field using a non-paramagnetic gas such as nitrogen. It is detected by a capacity microphone detector again and then converted into electric signals. Horiba MPA, magnetopneumatic analyzers, uses air as the carrier gas, hence no cylinder gas as carrier gas is required. The magnetic field uses AC-driven electromagnet and the signal is processed as AC signals, contributing to a stable measurement values. I know that this is quite complicating uh, and it might be uh, not all information relevant for today's job, but uh, as we have limited time only, I propose you uh, to get in touch with your local Horiba India uh, 
salesperson or technical person, and they will go in detail into explanation again. The same is for here for the complete function. Uh, the complete solution is done from a professional guys. If you need to hear more details, please get, get in touch with the local Horiba staff. Just one topic I want to point out, the three stages dehumidifying system. Uh, first of all, we cool down the gas with a train separator to 50 degree. At a 50 degree, we have a pre-cooler. And finally, we have a main cooler, which is reducing to 5 degree C humidity level. This is minimizes the dissolution loss of the SO2 and the NO2. And the travel by the train in the gas is reduced dramatically. And with this solution, we can handle and work humidity level up to 40% relative humidity in the sample gas. Finally, uh, there are the, the topics we need to show is that all the major parts of the optical, like detector, optical filters, light source, and so on, are made from Horiba. And you see here some pictures which are done in the Horiba factory in Kyoto or close to Kyoto in Japan, where all these detectors are produced by our own stuff. I wanted to add some uh, slides for the dust analysis because this is also one imp important part. We also can offer you a dust and opacity meter called EMD 5100. The is a uh, pass through a detector and can measure, as already mentioned, dust in di uh, direct or opacity between 220 uh, and 100%. The instrument need to have a bird chair unit to keep the hot gas from the stack uh, away from the electronics. And this bird chair unit is part of the delivery of this opacity dust meter. How it works? I would also say that this is now, as it is already uh, ahead in our um, time, I will skip this slide. It's a pass-through, uh, and uh, the light transmission and the formulas can be read and explained by the Oriva Indian technical staff. To calculate all the necessary re relevant uh, data and also measure the, the flow and the moisture in the stack, we have a moisture analyzer and a flow meter uh, available. The flow meter is at the pressure difference method and uh, to calculate the flow rate, where you measure the static pressure and the dynamic pressure. And the difference of these two pressures is uh, giving a signal for the flow, for the speed of the gas. And by compensating with absolute pressure and temperature, you have a standardized no, uh, normative level of the uh, flow. So finally, coming to the data acquisition system, you see here at the left, you have the stack with the analyzer room. You connect uh, with a LAN or uh, other uh, uh, internet connection, uh, depending on the customers. Uh, you have PC for data local uh, local data viewing. Then you connect to the internet or you can connect the analyzers directly. You uh, can put it to a cloud server. You can uh, put it to the CP, CP cloud server. You can put it somewhere in your own cloud server. Depending on the customers requested, the data acquisition system looks in very different way every time you need to have your own acquisition system. So that's the last topic already. Uh, what is the Indian facility and solution provider capability? You see here some slides. Horiba India Technical Center in Pune, where we have an in-house facility of the automotive testing of the process and environmental gas analyzer localization and uh, the scientific application lab and also water analysis. We do here turnkey solution for SEMS. It means if you have a problem, you need a solution, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to monitor, our engineers can, are able to make a complete turnkey key solution, starting from the engineering to the installation and uh, 
uh, for the gas analysis, for the dust analysis, for the flow monitor, with finally the data collection system and having the data transferring system to CPCB and furthermore. Some instruments you have, uh, we have shipped already from, uh, done from Horiba in the technical center. The next one, other technical center you see here, uh, some pictures done later. And also we can provide shelters where the instruments and the cabinets are located in. So I want to take this um, opportunity uh, to invite you for the upcoming webinars, which will be held from one of my colleagues in April 2020. Please get in touch again with your local Huriba India member to get the connection link in time. I hope I had a chance to take some inf new information for you out of this webinar. We are going now to the questions and answers sessions and Mr. Ranjit will take over from here again. Thank you, Gerard, for your wonderful presentations. And uh, uh, I hope uh, uh, the audiences over here has gathered a good knowledge out of these presentations. And we look for much, uh, you know, uh, much questions from there and their anticipations for the next of the two sessions. I can see that uh, there are many questions. Uh, I will uh, try to reply most of the questions which I have noted down, which has been shared in the screen. But uh, uh, rest of the questions can be answered, you know, uh, later on. And uh, we will share you uh, the email ID, or my colleagues will be in touch with you, whosoever has been touched by you for the registration process. So first, I would like to answer one question, which says that. For municipal waste to energy plants, for which of the sampling parameters Horiba make offer? Please also send us a copy of this very useful presentation. Sure, we will share this uh, useful presentation to you. And for municipal waste to energy plants, we can offer you all the parameters at this moment of time as per the 2016 guidelines. And we are very much into this particular measurement. We have installed many analyzers and other uh, world areas yes we can do it uh, please be in touch with uh, our uh, with Horiba India we can give you more details on that uh, is there any specific reason for spike in SO2 and NOx readings readings yes there can be a specific reason in SO2 and NOx readings it can only happen when you know uh, the light up is there or there is any upsurge in the process, then only we can find SO2 and the NOx readings are going high or just a momentary spike you can get or any kind of uh, pollutants which we are not expecting for the combustion, then also the SO2 and the NOx readings can, you can have a spike. Uh, the next question is the instrument is flame proof or not? No, for SEMS, uh, you do not require the, at the, we do not require any kind of flame proof analyzers or the instrument. But yes, if you are from an oil and gas industry or any kind of explosive industry, we can also give you that flame proof instrument also to cater your application. Uh, next question is. Uh, yeah, there is one question which is asking that for SEMS extractive type as per CPCB India, which type of oxygen analyzer is required inbuilt or separate? You can have both kind of oxygen analyzer. You can have inbuilt as well as separate. It all depends upon your, you know, your uh, what kind of location you are, whether you are already using an oxygen analyzer or not. So if you are using an oxygen analyzer, then why to invest for another one? But if you are not using an oxygen analyzer, it is better to have an inbuilt analyzer from for which you are also measuring SO2 and NOx and other parameters. Next question is, what is the distance which can connect the sampling probe? Uh, the, it is better or it is advisable to keep the analyzer panel as uh, as you know uh, close to the sampling point because this will not only uh, 
this will not only uh, um, uh, give you a better response time but also your uh, uh, you know also you can have a true representative of the sample for uh, if you keep the sampling probe near to the analyzer panel uh, um, so yes another question is for less power consumption can it be taken to the flange height also the cost will be reduced yes absolutely right uh, the cost will be reduced in terms of power consumption as well as the heat stress line because heat stress line also uh, consume powers uh, obviously it is better to keep to the flange height and if you are into a power plant there is uh, there is a provision you can keep at the 30 meters or 60 meters but yes it is very you are absolutely right that kept as close as possible can customers calibrate online continuous stack monitoring system yes it, you can ca continuously uh, calibrate the online um, stack monitoring system then uh, one more question uh, is there that what is the option if the building is more than 200 meter high and the system is located ground floor or basement it is always recommendable to keep the uh, analyzer at closest to your sampling point uh, or uh, as our the sample line is less uh, if it is not accessible or if it, there is any space constant or the location constant yes you can have a 200 meter high in that case the pump size you have to size the pump and obviously the heat stress line you have to size again to the heat stress line or the sampling line so there is one question regarding CA QMS that is continuous embedded air quality model compliant to CPCB protocol. Yes, we do. We have an analyzer uh, which is compliant to CPCB protocol. Is SEMS required any calibration? Uh, SEMS is a system, yes, but the analyzer which is required in the SEMS uh, is yes, you required in calibration. And it depends upon manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, there is a protocol how uh, the SEMS is required. And yes, this calibration is required to check the zero and the span drift, whether your uh, analyzer is giving proper zero or whether the analyzer is, uh, you know, calibrated in proper range. Yes, this is very, very important to us. Explain quality requirement for SEMS. Yeah, this is a, a inland, this is a very broad chapter. You can touch in questions with us and then we can, you know, uh, give you the proper information. It's a, there is a very good question which is saying that why drift is there in analyzer even though we are calibrating down on mode 9. Drift of the analyzer can happen of many reasons. One of the reason is that uh, if the analyzer is not well uh, positioned or commissioned, uh, there can be a vibration. And uh, in the analyzer, there are two main parts. One is the electronic part and the optical part. And both are very, very sensitive. Even the optical part is more sensitive than the electronic part. So if there is any kind of mismatch of the alignment of you know for with the detectors and the uh, emission yes then uh, you need to align it and for alignment you need the calibration gases to calibrate one and uh, second is that if uh, there is any kind of uh, unwanted uh, measurement if it is coming into the sample then also you need to calibrate one so this is a again a very subjective kind of uh, question yes you can be in touch with us we can educate you or we can guide you as much we can Uh, these are uh, uh, some of the questions which I have picked ram randomly from uh, the presentation. And any any questions you have, anyone you want to just be in connect with us, please. Uh, our uh, office address is here, you Horiba India Private Limited, 246 Oakland Industrial uh, Estate, Phase 3, New Delhi 1. And uh, uh, this is Ranjit Roy. The, my email ID is there, Ranjit.Roy, and my mobile number is also there in the last screen. Please be be feel free to touch with us and with more of your queries. We will be happy to give you all the solutions. We are a solution provider. We have a very good, uh, as Gerard had 
explain we have a very good uh, technical center at pune please visit to our technical centers be connect with us and thank you very much for all your participation and uh, and all your questions we will touch with you and whosoever is asking for uh, the presentation yes we will share the presentation thank you very much and thanks once again thanks gerard and thanks all of you thanks to all the audience for the listening and i hope i can uh, was able to give you a nice information as i can see from the chat there is already some very positive feedback thanks for that again if you have any questions come to mr ranchit presentation will be shared to all uh, interested and you can contact your colleagues in india in in daily office anytime if you need it thank you and bye 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 everyone thank you